What's the worst thing in the music business for you? Like that you have to do, you know, as part of your photo, job. Photo sessions, yeah. with, without question. In yeah. fact, I did a magazine, I don't know, it's been like three years ago now, and it was a men's journal, and it was a photo shoot interview, and I, that day, and they did great. I, I mean, they didn't do anything wrong. I just, that's when it hit me. I absolutely, I don't care what it's what kind of exposure, what it means yeah. to, I am not doing them anymore. And I'll be damned if they didn't talk me into doing one about three weeks ago again. <laughs> Have you ever done I, Vanity the, Fair? N- uh, 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 no, I don't think so. Because they really care. <clears throat> oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's, <clears throat> and we got a good picture. Ronnie and I did Vanity Fair one time. But it's like, you know, it's like some guys around here, you learn if you do enough, <clears throat> there's guys that can shoot it out pretty quick. Right. You know, it's like, brah, 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 and you're like, that was it? Awesome. I love right. you. I will see you again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then there's the ones that, just one more setup, and you turn the corner on some leopard skin couch or mm. something, you know, and go, why do I need to sit? Ah, oh, trust me, you know, this will look great, right. you know? No, it looks like me on a leopard skin couch. <laughs> Burn that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's, I'm in a bad mood when the days I wake up and know there's a photo shoot for an album or anything or for the voice promo. I, I, I mean, I just I think don't chicks like enjoy getting dressed up, maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm wrong, but they seem to have a much better attitude of getting the whole glam squad sure. together and everything. Sure. And for us, we're thinking about, man, I could be in a deer blind. It's a waste right of a day. To me, you ought to be able to get away with a picture once every 10 years. Because, you know. I'm still pretty. George Strait, you can't tell me <laughs> George Strait has used the same pictures from album shoots since 1989. There is nobody talking George Strait and doing a <laughs> photo shoot. Don't we always use George? As the, as the, as the, <laughs> we like, George Strait ain't doing this. He didn't have to go. Why did <laughs> it is. It is. I can't tell you how many times Ronnie and I just made that very comment, you know. <laughs> George, George didn't Strait do isn't doing this. He only does, uh, he does meet and greets at, with the groups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... It used to be when we released an album and we'd have a we'd have a song and you got you I'll name the dogs, which we'll get back to. Mm-hmm. But um well we'll just take it right now. What, what is the difference in naming a child and naming a dog? Well, I think with a for me, naming a dog is a mockery. It's like, you know, you would you name a dog doo doo. Or something like, you know what I mean? That you know when you say their name, it's going to be something that makes you laugh at them, you know. And I and I don't know. I've never named a kid. I would think you would take it a little more serious than that. You know, you'd pass on something or you know, really search it out. And for me, it's like for a dog, you could name it Kick Me or something like that. It's like, well, you named your dog Kick Me. That's that's cruel, you know. But yeah, but it's funny. What's the best name you ever had for a dog? Uh, I had a dog named Steve uh, for a long time, and uh, and now my dog is named Betty, and I got a cat named Dave. I like to give animals people people, people names. names. I think it's funny. <laughs> I don't know why. See, I purposely try to make myself laugh over pet names. My grandfather, who was <clears throat> had a dairy, you know, is just hardcore made his own chitlins and you know just he was a he was a farmer's farmer who but his his rat terrier was named video you know? <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean see video <clears throat> so, how did that come about which would be you know just he thought it was funny yeah you know <laughs> it was it was so against anything you would expect him to video. name something, yeah, you know, he he knew he had he had a grin way down there inside somewhere, and his <laughs> his animals were a great place to bring it out. What's the worst? I know you've had a lot of animals because, like, when I, I just thought about him, and mm-hmm. he had a raccoon, which was yeah funny when it when it was he had flying squirrels, he had all kind of stuff mm-hmm. in cages, big big cage with deer in it. He raised a bunch of deer right. and whatever. 
But he, that raccoon got really mean. You know, it was not a something that it went from being funny to, you know, it, it'd go in the kitchen and just tear everything off the shelves and mm-hmm. whatever, you know, right. you know, and <laughs> You could kick it, and it's like kicking a sandbag, you know. <laughs> we can't hurt it. Can't <laughs> you just hurt get out of here. He was yeah. So you're afraid, you know. Finally, I don't know how I got rid of him. That was an untold story. Well, it's hopefully got some use out of it. Yeah. <laughs> we probably <laughs> ate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst, worst animal that you ever had? I've had three raccoons in my life. But I haven't had one that made it over a year old. My raccoons, I just leave them out there with the dogs, you know. And you get them young enough, and they're tame, and and I would just sleep with the dogs, and they got ran over as a result, uh-huh. you know. Uh, all three of them. The dogs, got the raccoons, ran over. or both. The just the raccoons it was the only one that didn't figure out. Hey, you need to go all the way across the road, <laughs> and also in. I'm not so sure if people didn't see a raccoon and go run over it, you know. And this is this is back in the backwoods, uh, and they don't do that as with a dog, I guess. But uh, those weren't good. They were good, but uh, you know they can get aggressive. Mm-hmm. The worst pet I ever had, and I didn't realize. Now I do. I didn't realize that just because a possum is little does not mean it's a baby. Because, you know, they're born when they're like an inch long or mm-hmm. whatever, and they go into the pouch. It's a marsupial. And I had a cousin that found a nest of possums one time. And, man, he and he said, you want one? I said, yeah. You know, and it was cute. It was little. It's probably, you know, with its tail and everything, maybe 10 inches long or 12 inches long. And, man, that thing. But it had teeth 10 or 12 inches long, too, <laughs> man. I remember getting it out and playing with it one day and, you know, Touched it wrong or whatever, and that thing bit through my finger like a knife went through there, really? you know. And he ended up out in the yard. Mm-hmm. I figure if he's big enough to want to eat my finger, he can probably make it on his own. <coughs> you know where that wound up? In the road. <laughs> <laughs> probably. But, At the time, I didn't but, care. You know why the chicken crossed the road? To show a possum it could be done. <laughs> 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 so, so back to my original question. Okay. Um, so, and this is something I haven't seen you do before, but maybe maybe you have. Um, but usually, when we have a song to promote, like your current single, you go and you, you're doing a lot of shows. Now you got an album coming out, working hard, doing yeah. your deal. But you're playing all all these different songs off your mm-hmm. album. And um, I know how I, come. You know I. Look, man, it is the record industry. To say it's changing is a, an understatement. You know, it, it has changed, and now it feels like it's changing again from that. And and I don't and I can't keep up with it. And but what I do know in what is what way? Excuse me for interrupting. But. In in the way of what's the proper way to what's the correct platform to release new music and, and what's the way to go about it? Do you hold your cards? To me, I always thought you didn't want anybody to hear anything on your album until they got it, you know, because mm-hmm. that's what the mystery is. of it. going to buy that album and see what's on there. And and now I just don't think, you know, with young people and, and the way that music's released, I think if you don't hold their attention because they're being pulled at from so many different directions mm-hmm. that – you that mess they may not care about that mystery you know what i'm saying and so with my last album uh, we had the single out which was uh, came here to forget and then we had a song on angry birds movie called friends that was came out the, the near the same time as the single did mm-hmm. so there was two out there working mm-hmm. and then we released a song called save your shadow to christian radio uh that was also on the album and then Gwen and I had that duet that mm-hmm. we didn't release as a single, but we performed it on television shows. And what we found out is like, wow, that and that album did for me anyway did did pretty good. And and we just figured, look, number one album. Yeah, we figured, hey man, 
it's better, I think, to just get that music out there because maybe if maybe they're not into that single, but maybe they're into this album cut. And so, I, I you know, I try to follow along. I'm old school. I, you know, for me, I, I I love the mystery, but it's apparently that's not where we're at anymore. I think honestly, it's more about which. It, we're we're kind of like old school in a bit of a one hit wonder world as far as the charts go. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I'm doing this countdown show. I watch. I'm like, what happened to them? What happened to them? That was a good song, right? You know, but they hadn't had music out in a while. But I think careers still, you know, even from when we started, is still the important thing because I think we've found that, especially country music fans, they'll hang with you. You know, if mm-hmm. they like you. And what you do. And so I think maybe it's not the song driving that album so much like it used to be. It's just one song on the radio, and that that's the thing, as it is you mm-hmm. driving mm-hmm. that album. And you as a personality <clears throat> from doing the voice to doing, and all these different songs, and I like that, but I like him, and other oh, doing that together, and all those things just create maybe create that interest right. to where people just go, and what's the whole album sound like? Right. You know, and, Maybe there's just a different mentality. I love the song. Um, I lived it. Oh, thank you. I think, of we, course, you do. That's that's. You know, you don't hear songs like that anymore, which is which is a shame because we've got a, a community here in Nashville that's full of writers that are capable of coming up with songs like that, and and uh, but uh, you know they just don't get recorded. I, I think, and and that's why you don't hear them that much. And when that song came came my way I kind of feel like right now and even though it may just be a moment in time you know I felt like it's a it would be good to get some things out there and and hope they do well but it would be good to get some things out there that not not a full-on throwback to old school country music but maybe a some maybe some 90 sounding stuff on radio you know and and to me, I lived it, and 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 even I'll name the dog sounds like a Shenandoah sounding record or something <laughs> like that to me. You know, I wanted to, and I and I even had this conversation. I said, man, what if this is the last chance to get a song like these on the radio before you know country music takes the next turn that it's that it's bound to take, which is okay. Uh, it, it's got to, it changes and it's it's going to. There's nothing you can do to stop it, but. I remember thinking, wow, this could be the last chance to have a a song like that, you know, out there, kind of a story, a reminiscent song yeah. about, you know, a, a lifestyle that doesn't really exist anymore except in our memories, you know, and, and so. And our grandparents. Yeah, and, yeah. Which we got to live it with them, I think, <laughs> sure. a lot of us. I mean, I think about, you did it, I, I know you did, I didn't even want to ride in the front of the, the truck when I was a kid. That was that was <laughs> that was mad about it, you know. I want to get in the back, you know, and that's just what you did. And nobody even thought that there was anything wrong with that. Of course, now you know. Now you would be on the you'd be on the news if you did that. If you put a kid in the back of your truck, you know. But we all did it back sure, then. Everybody did, and things like that. It's just, uh, and it seemed innocent back then, you know, to me as a kid, and and so. That's why I love that song. Yeah. I mean, even listening to that this morning, I had a, had a real flashback. My grandfather took two two-by-sixes and bolted them down from side to side up against the window on the back of the pickup hmm. so us kids would have a place to sit. Which of course is way dangerous than even sitting down and <laughs> get you up there a little the bit more, kids, where you could slide off the seat. And, you know, really, I think that, that now, there wasn't a guardrail or anything uh, right. to catch us going from si- and sliding from side to side. We just laugh and roll all over each other. You go fall off, you know. know yeah. Well, back, we were tougher back then. We were back when you could have a little fun without a helmet on. <laughs> That's funny. Never, never taught anything about it you saw people go down main street with in a truck with full of people in the back yeah grown-ups kids everything <laughs> yeah just trying to have a little fun yeah 